The commentator is Robert Stevenson. Stalingrad, promo of World War II. For hours, days, and months, for in this period, every woman and child becomes Stalingrad's defender against furious, increasing Nazi sky and land attacks. The destruction of homes and factories is unending, but despite this avalanche of shot and shell, the heart and the will of the city's defenders never falters. Nazi dive bombers attempt to destroy a bridge, one of many erected every night, but they fail utterly in every attempt to stem reinforcements. Russia and Russians are determined to hold at all costs. Perish but do not retreat is the order of every day. Here the defenders battle the invader from house to house and street to street. The undying will to resist against seemingly hopeless odds is the valiant story of Stalingrad. Every bit of cover becomes a blazing fort. Ruined buildings are bombed, captured and retaken, but the will to hold never falters. Every battered factory becomes a battleground producing German casualties. Reinforcements arrive when Stalingrad's capture seems imminent. This tragic scene grimly symbolizes the bravery of men, women, and children who refuse to surrender. As autumn comes, hope rises again in Russia. All that Hitler could give, they've taken for a second time. And from battered Stalingrad, small patrols move forward toward the enemy. Now comes Russia's greatest ally, the snow and zero cold of winter on the steppes, and again the tide begins to turn. Now the Soviet armies are again on the offensive, and all the ground gained by Hitler's hordes is threatened as his armies are put to rout. On every snow-covered plain the fighting rages. A soldier goes down in the hail of enemy fire, and another casualty is taken to the rear. A scene to remember. Two Nazi supermen run for their lives. And close on their heels are the Russians moving in for their prey. Units of the great Soviet reserve armies develop an amazing pincers movement. Battling in zero weather is a job the Russians know how to do. Frozen ground, sub-zero winds, and all of the rigors of a Russian winter are endured and mastered by the Soviet fighters. Women move up under fire to give first aid to the wounded. In frigid temperatures, a casualty receives immediate treatment by these people who understand how to wage winter warfare and thus save many a Russian soldier to fight again. Exterminating Nazis is this man's specialty and he seldom misses. The soldier keeps score of his shots right in the snow beside him. And there's one more. Soon, the German armies within Stalingrad are cut off by the Russian advance. The enemy can now be supplied only by air. And here's an actual scene of a Nazi transport plane brought down, one of hundreds destroyed with all its human cargo and supplies. From strategic points on the Moscow front, from Stalingrad and from deep in the besieged oil fields of the Caucasus, a midwinter miracle is seen for the second time in Russia. The Red Army, which Hitler proudly proclaimed he had destroyed in 1941, strikes back in its greatest offensive.
United States Carrier X plows through the troubled South Pacific Ocean. Planes leave the deck to guard against an ever-present menace from the skies above. An enemy plane is sighted swooping down on the mighty flat top. Anti-aircraft guns mark their warning, but the Nipponese airman throws caution to the wind. There's a hit on the after deck, port side, a bomb blast through. Fires flare and clouds of smoke billow out of the smashed and splintered deck. As the wounded carriers maneuver to escape further destruction, Uncle Sam's fighters brave the enemy's fire to quench the flames before they reach the powder magazine. But there is no let up as more Jap planes roar overhead. Another hit is scored as the crew continues heroically to battle the flames and bring them under control. Under clouds of death smoke, two Jap planes dive to a smoldering watery end. No lost motion, not a false move as officers and men conquer the blaze amid the fury of war. The huge ship circles the waves as tons of water pour into the burning inferno. Soon the flat top's wounds are bandaged, its deck made secure with temporary repairs. She sails on, undaunted, to face the enemy. As another dawn breaks through the tropical skies, Carrier X again gives battle. Again the Japs swoop down from the clouds. Again our anti-aircraft guns pepper the sky with tracer bullets, each carrying bad news to the invaders. Bombs explode in near misses around the carrier. Men drop to the deck to avoid flying splinters. The concussion is terrific. A holocaust of white-hot steel forms a curtain of doom for Nippon's fighter planes. This one defies fate too often. He dives low. Our gunners, now battle-seasoned veterans, bring down their target, and another Jap bomber falls to its doom. as a daring Navy cameraman takes the most spectacular war scenes ever filmed. More Yankee planes are made ready on the flight deck in this race against time and speed. More ships bark a warning as more Jap bombers appear. And with them, huge bombs that burst, sending geysers of seawater spurting to the skies. Our sky fighters return for more fuel, ammunition and bombs. This one, ran into trouble. A repair crew rushes to its rescue. Uncle Sam's gunners are straight shooters. The Japs find that out in this fight to the finish. Curls of smoke on the sea mark the finish of more Jap bombers. Jap dives for the kill. He lets go a bomb. It's a near miss, but the concussion shakes the sturdy carrier. It shudders under the strain. One lone plane is literally lifted from the deck and draped over the side. The Navy cameraman sticks to his post amid a hail of fire to make these astounding action pictures and record history as it happens. One Jap left, and our gunners are right on his tail. They stay there until they shoot him down. Again, Carrier X comes through. Again, the enemy is routed, and the gallant ship sails.